Hey guys, it's JP with REITips.com and FreeREIForms.com. I got another free forms video for you today, but before I jump into it, the standard disclaimer applies. Please use this form at your own discretion and at your own risk, and use this information at your own risk. No guarantees implied or otherwise. So, having said that, uh, we're going to go through the memorandum of agreement today, and this is not actually my form. It's from a buddy of mine named Sean McCloskey, who is a uh, short sale Sherpa. This guy kills it in the short sale arena uh, and he's actually got in my opinion one of the best if not the best most comprehensive home study course on how to make a killing in short sales today uh, available. If you want to get more information on Sean you can find him at his website shortsalesherpa.com shortsale s-h-e-r-p-a dot com. That'll take you right over to him uh, and definitely you should check him out. Um, oh, and by the way, if you haven't had a chance to check up uh, or to pick up my uh, free real estate investing forms and contracts and checklists, a whole batch of them uh, that come right from my own business endeavors and those of my friends and colleagues, you can go pick them up, no strings attached, over at freereiforms.com. So be sure and check that out too. Now, the form uh, you're about to go through, the memorandum of agreement, is very similar, you might notice, to another form of mine called uh, the Affidavit of Equitable Interest. Really both of these forms serve the same purpose, to protect your interests as the buyer if you think you have a squirrely seller who may not make good on their end of the deal. It clouds the title. Um, so in function it's very similar, although they are different forms. So I'm giving you both, so you can use either one, whichever suits you better. You'll notice in the video here in a second that here in Memphis, uh, in order for me to record a document like this, it has to be notarized. So my version, the Affidavit of Equitable Interest, has a place for notarization at the bottom. On the other hand, in St. Louis, where Sean does most of his business, uh, you don't have to have things like that notarized to record them, so his does not. So uh, just use whichever suits you best, um, and uh, I guess that's it. Without further ado, let's jump into uh, the forms video, which, by the way, comes right out of Sean's material, right out of his home study course, uh, and I'll catch you on the other side of the video. Hello all, this is Sean McCloskey from ShortSaleWealth.com. You are checking out our video tutorials here, which is part of the Short Sale Wealth Home Study course. I've got J.P. Moses on the line. How are you, J.P.? Hey, my friend. Doing well, thank you. Good. All right, today we are going to go over the Memorandum of Agreement. This is a, another very simple form that should not take very long for you to understand, as well as go over with the homeowner. Uh, we actually don't use this all the time. This serves basically one purpose, and it's only kind of a half purpose at that. This is one of those forms that we uh, may not even need, but we include in the CTP packet just in case we need it. I'd, ra I'd rather have one printed out and with me if I need it uh, than wish I had one at the appointment. A memorandum of agreement is basically an agreement that can be filed against the property at your local county courthouse that uh, basically says it gives public notice to the entire world that you have an agreement to purchase the property from the homeowner. Therefore, technically the homeowner is not supposed to be able to sell the house unless this memorandum of agreement is uh, wiped away. Okay. Realistically, this memorandum serves uh, about 80 percent of that purpose because properties actually can be sold even though this is recorded against it. Most people don't know that. Uh, this kind of puts a cloud on the title. Why would you use this? Well, we've used this in the past when a homeowner did not want to necessarily sign the deed over to us. As you've heard me say in some of the other parts of this course, I don't think getting the deed signed is absolutely necessary. I do like to get it signed in every occasion that I possibly can, but I don't think it's absolutely imperative to the deal. What I will tell you is that by not getting the deed signed at the initial meeting, you are opening yourself up to potential problems, but if your communications are in line with the homeowner, with what your expectations are, I, ha me personally, I haven't had any problems in that, in that uh, regard. If you want to, if you don't get a deed signed, the memorandum of agreement can be recorded against the property. It's kind of like a, a generic version of recording the deed. It doesn't give you ownership rights by any means, but it 
supposedly puts a cloud of, on the title just enough to where they can't sell it without your permission. Like I said, there are ways around this, so this is not foolproof. It's just something to get as a backup. Okay, so let's get into the the uh, details here. Uh, this is basically announcement to the world that I, Obligor, which is the homeowner, okay, so John Smith, have entered into an agreement with the trust. So the 123 Elm Street Trust, and then you're always going to put the trustee name behind it, Sean McCloskey trustee, or whoever your trust is. All right, Obligor has... Uh, agreed to sell the below described property to the obligee. All right, this is nothing more than the address of the property. So one, two, three, Elm Street, St. Louis. Oh, my typing's bad today. Six three one three one. Anyone dealing in and with the subject property should contact obligee at whatever your address is. You can put in your PO box, your office address. Uh, your home address, whatever you want to put in here. It might even be uh, beneficial to put a phone number in here, although you certainly don't have to. Okay, That's it. All you do here, have it dated, have the obligor sign this document, or I should say authorize this document, and you're done. Now, when you're presenting this to the homeowner, the only reason you would need this is if they did not sign the deed. If they did sign the deed, skip this step. You don't need this. Recording this on top of the deed would be completely worthless and a waste of your time and money to record it. So, so throw it away if you get the deed. If you don't get the deed, you can ask the homeowner to sign this, or I should say, again, authorize this. That way it protects you. So that, And I would let them know, too. Listen, I'm going to be putting my hard blood, sweat, and tears into this, and I'm going to really work on getting this done. So the last thing we need here is something else coming up to expose us to any unnecessary risks. All right? Just kind of explain it in that way, and it shouldn't be any problem. Like I said, by the time you get to this part of the CTP document, 99% of the time people are grabbing your information, they're signing on the yellow line, and they're handing it back to you. It's amazing how many people don't even read or want an explanation for what you put in front of them. So don't make this a big deal. Any questions, JP? Well, yeah, do you, um, with a document like this where you're looking at the rarely exercise, but nonetheless the possibility that you may need to use it to put a cloud on title to protect your position, um, do you find that you, I mean, in my area, I actually, I've actually used a document very similar to this in a transaction, and I could not record it unless it was notarized. That's a very good point. Well, in, in the state of Missouri, this did not have to be notarized. Uh, in other states, that's a, a possibility, so that's a good point. If well, now, it doesn't have to be notarized to be a legitimate document in Tennessee, but the one of the things that, you know, maybe it's unique to our register's office, but the register's office is where documents like this are recorded, deeds and such, and they simply will not record anything that's not notarized. Okay, so if that's the case in your area, then you can simply take any of the other forms that you have in your forms list and uh, copy and paste one of the notary sections of that in there, or just have a notary sign on the bottom of this and use their little stamp. That's a great point. In Missouri, we don't have to do that, and so we, we've used this particular form in Missouri, but you know, in your state, that might be a little different, so that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. And, you know, that would be just a, a matter of a quick question as uh, as part of your preparation here. Uh, quickly and easily, you know, you can call the register's office or the courthouse or wherever the, the powers that be are that record these documents in your county and just ask them, do you, you know, I've got a memorandum of agreement, I'm looking to record, um, is it required that it be notarized? Okay, Kelsey and I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, enjoy using the memorandum of agreement. Isn't that right, Kelsey? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, if you want more info on Sean and his material, please feel free to stop by and check him out at shortsalesherpa.com. And if you want the rest of my real estate investing forms, free of charge, no strings attached, stop on by and say hi over at freereiforms.com. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one. Say bye-bye. <laughs>